This is Jeff Mizhevsky of the IBM Corporation, WebSphere application server for ZOS development and test team. And in this video, we're going to be looking at installing the IBM Installation Manager on ZOS. This is what you'll use to install WebSphere application server V8. What's actually provided as part of the beta download is what's called an IM or Installation Manager install kit. Think of it as kind of like the CD contents that you use to put Installation Manager on your system. And there's the file as we've uploaded it from a workstation to a ZOS system. We're going to unpack it into User LPP Installation Manager V1R4 and we've mounted an HFS there. This is going to be the place where we put the install kit and use it later on. It can be mounted read-write as soon as we put the contents in it which we're doing here with a simple unzip and you can use whatever unzip tool you have available on your system again this is not the installation manager but just the files that you'll be that you'll be installing uh, think of it as the rel files if you were using SMPE for example and this install kit could be copied or shared between several MVS systems. Once it's actually unzipped, we can take a look at what's in the install kit itself. It includes a couple of install scripts, group inst and install c and user inst, which we'll talk about later. And it also in contains a repository, which you'll recognize after some experience with IM, uh, which is, is for use by installation manager in installing itself, as we'll see. So the first thing to do is run the script in the install kit that creates a real live installation manager. The installation manager itself has to be read-write. We're going to put the binaries for the installation manager in opt slash IBM slash installation manager. We're going to put its runtime data into var IBM installation manager. Note that these are the default names for Unix systems, distributed Unix systems that host installation manager, which has been in the field for a while. That first message can simply be ignored as per the release notes and it runs oh a minute or two what I am is doing from the install kit is copying the binaries out of the install kit into OPT slash IBM slash installation manager and setting them up for use and also creating initial runtime data in var IBM installation manager that shows no products installed except the installation manager There are actually a couple of different install scripts, which we can use depending on how you want to invoke it. In this case, I'm running this entire process from a super user ID. And this is the ID which would be used for this particular installation manager whenever you want to run it. Later, we'll show you how to use a non-super user ID or a collection of user IDs to perform those administration functions. Now, I am install is complete. There is now an installation manager. So we go to where its binaries reside in OPT IBM Installation Manager. Oh, 
Once we get there, we can take a look at what's here. And there are basically three directories, license, which you probably won't worry about, Eclipse, which is the new bin. This is where all the, the executables live and properties. If we go into eclipse.tools, you see the line mode tools that we'll be using. IMCL, Installation Manager Command Line, is the command line tool for running IM. The first time you invoke it, it takes a little bit longer because it has to set up Eclipse defaults and, and such in your home directory, which is one reason that whatever user ID runs this needs a read-write home directory for Installation Manager to cache its Eclipse files in. And that's all there is to it. IAM is now running. So anytime you want to run it, you go to Opt IBM Installation Manager and invoke it, as we'll see in the next demo. Uh, we do have three file systems here. One of them contains the binaries, the GIN HFS, and we've mounted that at Opt IBM Installation Manager. The second includes the runtime data. As you can see, it's a lot smaller. We mount that at VAR IBM Installation Manager. The third we haven't used yet is the cache, which all the downloaded files will be used. It's larger. This one really does require its own file system. And later we'll look at how you do that with the WebSphere application server install. See the next demo.